Hi folks, we're going to factor a quadratic polynomial and you can see the polynomial I've chosen here in the upper left and the steps of this procedure I've got in the upper right. You can follow along with those steps if you'd like or I'll just walk through them. Now this is called the bottoms up method and you might not be familiar with this method. That's fine. If you like it, you can use it, but there are other ways to factor and those are just as good. I think this one's a little quicker, so I tend to prefer this, but you see what you like. Now the first step is to factor out the GCF. And I have a little note here that says, watch out, I want to keep the x squared positive. So what do I mean by that? What that means is if you were to take out a two, which most people would see and say, okay, this is negative eight x squared plus 10 x plus three. If you were to do that, it very likely would lead to a mistake because x squared is not positive. We need to change this around a little bit and make it a negative two. Okay, so that's going to be a negative 2x, uh, 8x squared, minus 10x, minus 3. That makes all the difference. Remember, this method is a hack. So it's going to be a little fragile, and you have to do things a certain way. But if you stick to the plan, it's actually quite nice. So there's my polynomial rewritten with the GCF factored out. And now the steps get a little complicated for a moment. I want to find two numbers which multiply to AC. Well, what's AC? Remember, that's a being the number in front of the x squared and c being the number at the end. And the product of those two numbers is negative 24. And uh, b is this linear coefficient right here. So that's negative 10. And now this often takes some guesswork, but I think we're going to land ourselves in a good spot if we pick 2 and 12. One of those has to be negative. Uh, since this is negative 12, negative 10, that's going to be a negative 12 right there, and a positive 2. Okay, and I double check myself to make sure, but they multiply to negative 24 and they add up to negative 10, so we are good to go. Now the next step, and keep in mind where we are here in this procedure here, uh, the next step says divide by the x squared coefficient. Well, that's the 8. So I'm going to divide by 8. And now what I'm going to do is reduce the fractions. So this negative 12 over 8, well, that's really just negative 3 over 2, and my 2 over 8, that's really just 1 over 4. And now I build myself a factored form. Be careful, because this won't be correct. We're almost there. We're not quite there. So I've got x plus 1 fourth, that's the fraction on the left, and x plus this negative 3 over 2, so I'll just say x minus 3 over 2. Now notice that these are fractions. And the original polynomial had nothing about fractions in it. So what we have to do to make this right is bring the bottom over here. Okay, the bottom of this fraction gets scooted over in front of the x. So now we have 4x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. And you're probably thinking, yay, now I'm done. Well, not quite. I did forget one thing this whole time. See if you can pause the video and catch it. It's that negative 2. From the beginning remember that gcf that we factored out this guy over here don't forget him it's still an important part of this polynomial now there's another what if scenario that often stumps people and what happens is you might start with a polynomial like this so th this answer is done right okay this is my answer but i'm saying what if we had something a little harder and what that might look like is way back in the beginning here and our problem, what happens if the polynomial you started with had nothing in the middle? So what do we do with b? What would b be in this case? Well, if you've got a polynomial with just an x squared and just a number at the right side, it's actually easy. If you think of this as 0x, if that's a 0x, then the b term in the middle is 0. So that's the only um, what-if scenario that I find people sometimes get stumble, uh, stumble on is what happens if that b term is zero, and then what happens if you have a GCF that's negative. Those are the most common errors. So play around with this method, see if you like it. 